Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome, my friend. Welcome to the middle of the week. I really do appreciate you making Bible Tract Echoes a part of your day. Some of you contact us and you tell us that you make time each and every day to listen to the broadcast. That's a huge, huge honor. Thank you so much. I, I really try to honor your listening time by making the Word of God clear and usable to make us more like the Lord Jesus Christ. And to that end, my Bible is open right now to the book of the Revelation, chapter 16. Chapter 16. Reach over, get your Bible, and join me there. Revelation, please. And chapter 16. In a moment, I'll begin to read at verse 14. Get also something on which you can jot some notes, because we're going to talk about the battle of Armageddon beginning today. But with that pen and paper handy, you'll be able to jot down our contact information because I want to put some gospel tracks in your hand. But let me lead into the study time this way. Now, again, just in case you have not been listening, at least for a while, you need to know that I've been doing a series of broadcasts dealing with Bible prophecy. And as I've done that, I've tried to do two things. Number one, use the clearest Bible passages we have on the various topics, letting those be our guide. Now, while not all of the details of prophecy are overtly clear as we'd like them to be, we we really try to emphasize those things that are clear in the passage. The second thing I've tried to do is to give a well-rounded presentation in the brief time frame on the broadcast. In the basic 11 minutes that I have of teaching time, it sometimes is hard to be cogent in, in analyzing the Bible passages we're using. Some topics of the Bible, when it comes to prophecy, can be rather involved and require multiple Bible passages to tie things together. Well, my time frame for teaching forces me to divide up some of those topics into multiple sessions, and the Battle of Armageddon is going to be one of them. But as I said, the Battle of Armageddon is my focus, and fewer words can be more ominous even to the the mind and the ears of an unbeliever than that word Armageddon. So get your Bible open, Revelation 16, get ready to take some notes. I mentioned a gospel tract here a moment ago. A gospel tract is an evangelism tool. Literally thousands, and I mean that wholeheartedly, thousands are coming to Christ all over the world every year, including your nation, through the tool called a gospel tract. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The tract in my hand today is called The Gift. Now, if you're hearing this on its proper schedule, you are hearing this right before Christmas, and obviously many people use this particular tract called The Gift at Christmas time because everybody's in a gift giving and gift receiving mode of operation. This clear gospel tract is simple. The words are a little larger print. The presentation of the fact that salvation is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The fact that it's a gift comes over here. Forgiveness, your forgiveness of sin is a gift. Giving peace, eternal peace and eternal life is a gift of God. You can't earn it. You can't merit it. You must, though, receive it as a gift free to you. Oh, but it cost Jesus Christ his very life and shed blood. That's the price tag. You receive it by faith. You're going to get some Christmas presents. You're not going to pay a dime for them, but you're going to enjoy them. If you don't receive the gift of eternal life as a gift from Jesus Christ, then friend, you don't have it. Here's a great, great gospel tool. It can be used all the year long, the gift. 
At the end of the program, my announcer will give you our contact information. If you give us your name and address, we'll send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks, including this one. And please do that today as pen and paper are handy there uh, for you. You can go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. Well, if your Bible's open to Revelation chapter 16, beginning of verse 14, the Bible says this, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garment, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together in a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Stop right there. Here we find our word Armageddon. It's a place. It's called the Valley of Megiddo. Many, many fierce battles over the centuries have been fought here in the Valley of Megiddo. Revelation 16 opens in verse 1 with God pouring out his wrath on the earth. This chapter 16 here, God's wrath is poured out in stages. The chapter speaks of seven vials or seven bowls, and these are word pictures here. Just as a bowl holds liquids at your house, God's wrath is viewed here as if it were a liquid, seven different kinds of liquid, wrath liquid, and each kind is tipped and poured out one at a time. God's wrath leads up to this battle, but, but, but wait just a minute here. Look in verse 14. Do you see that word battle there? You ought to underline it. You see, in our English language, when we think of a battle, we see it as one particular event. But the Greek word that's translated here refers to a campaign or a series of events. We're going to see that this as we go through the series of military events, this campaign in our study here. These series of campaigns are going to culminate in a major coming together of four armies. They're going to come to fight against one another. And as these four armies prime themselves to fight one another, Jesus comes. His second coming happens. And Jesus coming riding on his white horse, he's coming to defend the Jews, is going to bring an end to these four armies. And actually, these four armies who start coming to fight one another end up joining forces to fight against the uh, Jesus, but obviously they're going to fail and lose miserably. Now, let's answer a why question. Why does Jesus come to bring an end to this massive battle here that's happening in the area of, uh, of Israel? There are four basic answers that I know from the Word of God. If your Bible is open to Revelation 16, look back at verse 9. I didn't read it a moment ago, but verse 9 says this. I'm reading now. Men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power. The word power there means authority or control, which has power control over these plagues. That with Those are the bold judgments there. And they, the people on earth, repented not to give him give God glory. Now, what are the four reasons why God brings this battle and these four armies? Well, answer number one is this. The people have been blaspheming God. Here in chapter 16, you will see the people blaspheme God in verse 9, in verse 11, and verse 21. As God pours out his wrath using these seven bold judgments, the people of earth know, they know, they absolutely know it is God who is judging them and causing all of these problems. But instead of turning to God and repenting, they blaspheme God. They shake their fist at God. You and I say, how foolish, but they're doing it. That's the stubbornness of a wicked heart. If you do not know Christ as Savior, that's your heart. You're shaking your fist at God. The second answer why Jesus brings this battle to a close is this. God brings this military campaign 
because people do not repent of their sin. Again, verses 9, 11, and 21 all mention that the people who are doing this blaspheming refuse to repent. First, they are stubborn in their blaspheming, and second, they will not repent of their sins. These people are not, listen to me, they're not lacking in enough information to repent. They simply refuse to repent. I don't get lost people. Well, maybe if I remember back to before I came to Christ, I was stubborn and I refused to repent. I wanted to be my own boss. Does that describe you today? You need to repent. The third answer for this battle is this. Revelation 19 verse 6 says that these people who blaspheme and refuse to repent have shed the blood of God's people and preachers. Look at verse 6. It says this, for they, these non-repenting people, they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given, God has given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Since they have shed innocent blood. One of the judgments is that God turns the water to blood. And since they blaspheme, and since they cannot hurt God in their blaspheming, they then turn and try to kill the people of God. God has seen the death of many of his people, and precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And God reaches down and is going to bring an end to this rebellious, blaspheming crowd. The fourth and final answer that I find in Scripture as, as to why God brings the campaign of Armageddon, this one is found over in the Old Testament book of Joel, chapter 3. In Joel 3, listen to verse 2. It reads this way. I, God says, I will gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. That verse says that God brings the world's armies together. The word that's used there is the word plead in our Bibles. Joel 3, verse 2, he brings them there to plead with them. You and I use that word plead to talk about trying to correct somebody. But here, the Hebrew word means to judge or to sentence them. God's going to judge and sentence them due to their wicked treatment of the Jewish people and how they have carved up the physical land called Israel. Oh, my friend, when Jesus says we ought to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, we ought to then pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, came. He was the lineage of the Jewish people. Our Savior is a Jewish Savior. Friend, we've got to be careful how we treat the physical people called Jews, even though they are not necessarily walking with God. Praise the Lord for all those Jewish people, ethnically Jewish people who received Jesus as their Savior. Well, tomorrow, Lord willing, we're going to return to the topic of Armageddon. We're going to identify the armies then, and we're going to see as best we can about why these armies think that they are coming. Why do they think they're coming to this battle of Armageddon? But please, grab a hold of this. God's in control of the affairs of these wicked men. First, he gives them gospel witnesses, and he gives them powerful preaching prophets so that they might know the gospel. And then second, God gives them harsh signals of his judgment if they will not turn to him. And all of this for the goal of bringing repentance and giving eternal salvation to wicked people. But they refuse, and God judges. Dear listener, have you heard the gospel and to date refused Jesus as Savior? God is going to hold you accountable for your lack of repentance. Friend, you need to receive Christ today. A judgment time is coming. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, 
The word Tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTractsInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.